everybody, it is Erin and we are back and I thought we would have some fun with a paving stone. Um, I've had a couple of paving stones in my backyard for a while and I thought I'd spruce them up. They rest in my garden and how I was going to spruce them up was grabbing a stencil and this is a stencil from the Crafters Workshop and this one is specifically called Vineyard. So it's a 12 by 12 stencil and we are just going to use some decor and DIY paint uh, from Tattered Angels and this paint stays outside and it does not dull. It's it's a very good outside paint. It can take the weathering, no problem. I've had a couple of things I've painted uh, on wood that have lasted a couple of years. So that's been pretty good. So all we are gonna do is we are gonna take a, just a foam dauber and I am gonna get a little container so I don't have to keep dipping into this thing. And I decided I wanna do kind of like some muted tones. This is kind of a reddish stone to begin with um, and it is a round, so I thought that'd be kind of fun. And then I thought maybe we'd try to put some flowers on our vines when we're done. But the first step is the vines. Okay, so I probably put way too much paint in this little thing, but basically um, I did do a tester and on the tester one, I did the background and the vineyards in gray and it looks beautiful. I'll show you a picture of that shortly. But basically you want to get some paint on here and make sure it's not too gloppy. My daughter just went and got me a paper towel, which is fantastic. And then you're just going to press. So when you press down, you want to make sure that you get into all the little nooks and crannies, but you don't want to over press where it seeps through. There's going to be a little bit of seepage and there's really no way around that. So I just kind of keep daubing it off. Um, the reason why it looks like it's all kind of bubbly is because this is a little bit wet from when I cleaned it off from the gray I was using. So you just keep on going around. If it's not perfect, it's okay. It's an outside stone. What you don't want is you don't want a paint that's too um, thin because then it will seep underneath your stencil. So this I found is actually pretty good. I'm hoping that my wetness of my brush is not going to be a factor here. So I'm just going to keep on stenciling around. If you see a fun little hand coming in and joining us, my daughter's trying to help, coming to help. She thinks this is oh so much fun. So we're going to speed it up. All right, so now I've coated the whole thing. It's not gonna be perfect. There might be some seepage and let's see how good we did. And there it is. See, this was a little bit of seepage wherever you push down right through here, but that's maybe where we're gonna put a flower. So we're gonna have fun. At this point, you gotta let this whole thing dry and then we're gonna come back and add some fun. Okay, so my um, stone has dried and I can wipe my hands and it's good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to practice some, oops, I forgot to, clean this off is I've just been practicing making flowers. I am not an artist when it comes to free drawing and free painting. I can do stencils and I can glue things to know tomorrow, but um, this part's a little bit tough for me. So what my plan is, is to go in areas that are looking a little muddled, like this is very muddled. And just with a pencil, I'm going to start with drawing my circle and I'm just gonna freehand it. It's gonna get painted over anyway. And draw in some flowers to compensate for the fact that there's not a whole lot of separation between what is the vines because it got kind of bled through. So it's a perfect place to draw in, just like a little daisy, nothing fancy. I am not a rose kind of person. I can do another one right here. So I'm just gonna kind of go through, I think I'm gonna do one here. I'm just gonna draw circles where I feel like it needs to be. I'm going to put one there. This is another one where it looks really muddled. One here. I'm just drawing in my circles as kind of a frame of reference. I'm going to put one right here. And then also trying to space it nicely. So I think I'm going to do another one right here. I need to put stick one over here somewhere. So I'm going to stick one right here. And this one got a little muddled there. And then we need something over here too. So we'll go right in here. And I think I'm just gonna play with that to begin with. And I might need to add, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I definitely need an 11. Looks a little muddled right here, so we'll go with that. 
Now, the colors I have picked to go, I'm gonna use white for the centers for all of them, and then I picked some really pretty colors that I thought would go really well. Um, again, these are all in the same paint line, so I have a rose, a violet, a jade, and then I have saffron for the center. So I'm gonna keep on drawing the rest of my flowers, and then we'll start painting them. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my saffron and go ahead and do my centers. I've picked a kind of a nice small brush and therefore the centers can kind of dry up and then I'll start going in to each individual flower. So now that these have kind of gone on there, I need to let them set before I do the next level. Otherwise, I'm going to be blending all my yellow with whatever my petals are going to be. Um, so I need to let those set. If at any point I do feel like I mess up in the petals and I get into the yellow, I can always come back and redo the yellow again. But I just wanted to get kind of a frame of reference. So looking at it now, I've got 11 on here. There's a possibility I might add two more tiny ones. I did some flowers large, some small. Or I may just like the spacing. I need to kind of see how it sits first and I can always go back and add more, but it's hard to take away. So right now I feel like I've got a good smattering. So I'm gonna let these guys dry up and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've gone through and I've tested to see if these were dry by taking a paper towel and dabbing it. And I did notice that there was a couple of ones, which is why that one got a little bit smushed. But these, most of them are dry. Like this one, this one, I think both of these were. I'm also testing with my fingers. And by the time I get done painting some others, I can always twist and turn. So I am taking same paint. This is an amazing outdoor paint, um, the Decor and DIY. And this one is in violet. And I'm just gonna go along my paint lines as best as I, or my draw lines, sorry, as best as I can, cover up any of my pencil marks. And they don't have to be perfect in terms of what I drew. I'm just using them as a guide. And go ahead and make my flower petals. And flowers are not perfect, they don't have to be perfect. It is a little bit hard to paint on the concrete because there are some, you know, dips and grooves and kind of spots where it goes up and down, but it's not supposed to be a perfect thing. And the fact that flowers are not perfect either is nice. I may go back in with my yellow um, and redo the yellow spot just because I'm going to end up covering it and I want it to be nice and perfect, like a nice little circle. But doing the yellow circle to begin with is just giving me a frame of reference. Again, I can always go back and fix it. So I'm just gonna keep on doing my flowers, adding in my petals as best as I can. Again, they do not need to be perfect. And you could have left it without adding the flowers. It would have been really pretty just as a viney thing. I just thought, why not? You know, and there it is, just a cute little flower. If I wanted to add another one here, but I like it. I like it the way it is. You know, not all flowers are gonna be perfectly symmetrical and these don't have to be either. And I am not an artist by any, in terms of freehand art, that's about as good as I'm gonna get. <laughs> so I can take things and layer, but I, I can't free draw a beautiful three-dimensional flower on stuff. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and I have three colors that I'm gonna be playing with and I wanna space them out. So since I've got a purple here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the purple here as well. And I can pull the paint off the lid too. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and start painting up the rest of my flowers.
So at this point, I'm gonna let them completely dry. I'm debating whether or not I wanna add like little flicks of white in here and add some little, you know, some specks. So I drew some flowers over here to kind of play. I also combined the three colors. I changed my mind. I didn't go with the jade after all. I stuck with um, the red, the purple, and the peach, or technically rose, scarlet and violet and then I blended them to make another color of this purple that way I would have another color and when I did that I needed to add a couple more because it felt kind of lopsided so I went ahead and added in a couple more small little flowers and then I just went back again and redid all of the yellows in the middle so need to let everything dry I also did last thing I need to say was um I did a second coat on all the flowers. The color kind of saturated into the concrete and I really wanted them to pop on here. The green on the background, it's really hard to do two coats because then you're having a higher chance that it's going to blend and bleed in. So that's a single coat, but I liked it to just be a background and these are the pretty flowers that are popping off. So let everything dry for a good time. I really did a heavy coat center of the yellow in the saffron and just kind of letting everything just dry. And then we'll come back and place so the centers are not 100% dry, but what I have now, and it, this used to be an ebony, but um, my jar broke and I had an old gesso bottle that was pretty much empty and it was either waste a whole bunch of the black or transfer it and it turns gray. So that's what I ended up doing. So it's no longer a jet black. Now I have a pretty gray. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. And I've just been playing with the idea of adding a little bit of something fun in the center of these flowers. So I have a very thin, um, paintbrush here. I think I'm probably just going to use most of the lid because I'm not using a ton of this paint. It's just a very, very light strokes. And basically I'm going to try and show you this on this big one. I'm just adding some little lights kind of lines just in the center here. Just a little something to kind of define the flower. Just a little something like that. give the flower a little bit of something going on so it doesn't look so plain. Do it again for little guys as well. Doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just adding a couple little lines and they don't have to be on an angle. Some of them can be straight. It's just a little something. You could do three. You could do a big one and then a couple small ones. You could just do a couple. You can kind of play with it key thing here is you want to have a very small brush um, otherwise you're going to get really fat lines and that's not the look you're going for you're just emphasizing the flower a little bit and I figured the gray would look really good kind of with all the flowers and they don't have to be perfect lines it's just adding kind of like some hints of texture to the flower so that was a little bit dark on that one so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and keep adding my little wispy gray lines inside the flower. Again, letting the dry, letting all the yellow dry before I add the um, the ivory to it. So what I have right now is a little bit of ivory paint and I'm just going to go through and I've already done for most of them and I'm just adding a little bit of some dot flecks in the centers here. Um, pretty much got them all. I'm just finishing up the last couple. The entire thing is dry now. I let it dry and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to dry as long as you don't do a super thick coat of paint. But um, I think I started working on this around noon and it's about three and I've had stages of it drying and probably let it dry way longer than it needed to. So <clears throat> now that this is done, it's just adding a little bit more fun inside of the, the flowers itself. All supplies for this particular project are going to be listed down below. So for the stencil and for the paints and, you know, the rocks I ended up getting at one of the big, um, I think I got it at Home Depot, but Lowe's or something like that would have it too. The paver stones, and they're not that expensive. So it's a fun way to kind of decorate up your garden and your backyard or your front step or wherever you want to place them. So thanks for stopping by and please subscribe and 
have fun. I'll get some pictures of what they look like outside and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.